What is up you guys, I'm Charmix today, I'm gonna be reacting to Game Theory Minecraft's ending decoded by the Game Theorist. Now this is an older video from a few years ago, so it's gonna be interesting to see how he decoded the ending of Minecraft. But uh, yeah, with that being said, the original link's in the description, make sure you guys go subscribe to the Game Theorist. Without any further ado, let's begin. Five years ago, Minecraft got an ending, and for five years, that ending has- I Wait, it didn't always have an ending? I didn't know that. ...either been misinterpreted or completely ignored. Today, we change that. You can really tell there's a difference in the audio quality from this compared to, like, the more modern MatPat videos. Welcome to Game Theory, and welcome to 2016! It's 2016! So let's start things off with a message of love, a message of hope, a message of Minecraft. Now, if there's one thing YouTube loves, it's this game. Just look at the success of Captain Sparkles or Sky Does Minecraft, or the recent explosion of channels like the Diamond Minecart, Popular MMOs, and S Sunday. And the recent explosion that just happened a couple months ago. Pretty true that YouTube does love. YouTube does love Minecraft. It all points to one thing, that years after its release, Minecraft is just as strong as ever. And the game continues to evolve. Over on GT Live, I was fortunate enough to play around with one of its newest features, a literal working phone built inside of the game, ordering a real what? life pizza through a phone built of torches and redstone. <laughs> What? That has to be a mod or something. That's crazy. Yeah, and while we were at it, we kidnapped the pizza girl. Thanks again, Dallas. Oh, I'm gonna hold her on. It's gonna be amazing, guys. Anyway, what all of this shows is that Minecraft is, quite literally, an endless game. Which is why, when the full version of the game finally did come out, it was a bit odd that it had an ending. It felt strange, but it wasn't just putting an ending on the game that got people upset, it was how the game ended. In a nearly 10 minute long text scroll of two godlike beings talking about dreams within dreams. Wait, that's a part of the ending? I didn't know that. I always thought it was just fighting the dragon, that was it. Did they remove this? It's like they're analyzing Inception. It's very cryptic, very poetic, and to most gamers, very weird. We just got done surviving in a pixelated block world with zombies and exploding moss monsters. And our reward is what? Reading? Ugh. The only thing worse would have been to reward us with math. Ugh. To most players, <laughs> it was a 10 minute break to reload on snacks before hopping into creative mode to build more towering monuments to the male gen- Excuse me, Matt. They are called the Towers of Dawn. To others, they interpreted it as the game telling gamers to get out of the house and get a life. And to me, well, it was an episode waiting to happen. Because the ending of Minecraft has been tragically- What did you do to this Minecraft character? Why is he so jacked? Nord, written off as philosophical garbage, when it is, in fact, a beautiful, uplifting, and thought-provoking message to the legions of dedicated gamers who've taken the time to step into the blocky shoes of Minecraft Steve. And it's a long past time that we give these credits the credits they deserve. I didn't even know there were, like, these credits. First, if you haven't read the ending to Minecraft or just need a refresher on it, I recommend doing that now, though it's definitely not necessary to understand the episode. Regardless, BOOM! Link in the description. Alright, should I go read it? Should I go read it? Frick, I guess I might. I guess I will. But there are times it is sad, in a long dream, it creates worlds and have... I don't even know where a friggin' bastard! I can't- I don't even know where I was! But there are times it is sad, it in the, in the long, in the long, mother I'm trying not to swear, trying to- ah! I'm giving up reading that. I hope Matt can give me a summary. And I suppose I could read it here, right now, but the thing is 10 minutes, and my videos are already pretty darn- 10 minutes? Really? I didn't know Long that. already. Now, let me start off by saying that I can totally understand why everyone's initial interpretation to this wall of text was basically, get outside and get a life. The thing is just- from the little bit that I read, it doesn't sound like getting outside and getting a life. I don't know how to put it into words what it does seem like, but it doesn't seem like that. Begging for a too long, didn't read summary. But in absence of that, everyone latches onto key words. Things like the final words of the poem, wake up. As well as phrases like, the player was alive. You, you, 
you are alive. Lines like this, coupled with naturalistic imagery like shuffling leaves of the summer trees and crisp night sky of winter. This makes me think that a hipster wrote this. Seems to be the author telling us to wake up from the game and experience the greater world around us. But then stop for a minute and consider this. Don't you think it'd be a bit odd for the game to be telling the player to stop playing the game? Yes, that would be very odd. That would not be a good uh, business strategy. <laughs> Especially for a game that, as we talked about earlier, can be played endlessly. Seems like it would be kind of a bad business strategy, right? So Yeah, exactly. The poem to get some context. The voices we hear throughout the ending speak a lot about two different dreams. The short dream of the game Minecraft and the long dream of life. It's actually explicitly stated right here. But what's it all mean? Well, many gamers have theorized... Oh, so that, yeah, that's, that's, I can't even, I can't, what the hell is wrong with Guys, that calling the game a dream is saying it's not worth their time, hence the get a life interpretation. But notice here that the author calls life a dream too. It's the long dream of life, and this isn't just for literary effect, it's meant to be taken literally. Look at this line, quote, they see so little of reality in their long dream. And Charm X seems to be losing his end quote. This is the author explicitly telling us that there's a layer of reality beyond what you or I think of as our everyday lives. It would be like if Neo and Morpheus and everyone in Zion were still in the Matrix. Wait a minute, I have a theory about that exact thing. Huh. Shameless cross promotion for the win. Anyway, the world where we go to school, go to work, sit in front of our computers to watch an Oh, it says this was a couple years ago. Is this just when um, the video theory or the film theorist was just created? Episode of game theory over and over and over again. Or just go outside to play with uh, uh, stick in a hoop. I don't know. Whatever you'd play outside. Stick in a hoop? <laughs> what year do you think it is, Matt? Friggin... 1812? Another dream. Why does all of this confusing metaphysical mumbo jumbo matter? Well, if life as we know it and Minecraft are both dreams, it means that us playing the game is just as valid a use of our time as doing something in the quote unquote real world. So it's encouraging you to play the game more? Both are equally important because both are dreams. Just one happens to be slightly longer than the other. In short, it's the exact opposite of how everyone was interpreting this thing. It's not saying that playing games is a waste of time and that we need to get a life. It's saying that the choice to play games and engage in these virtual worlds is the same as engaging with the real world because, by their definition, they're both virtual worlds. But that there is some definitely kind of some kind of truth to that. Not that it's both virtual, but that you know, if you decide to play a game like Minecraft, you have an experience, and there's emotions and whatnot behind that experience. And that's the same thing if you were to go in the real world and do something. There's still emotions. There's an experience to be had there. And you know, in the end, what matters is the experience that you got from it and the emotions you felt and whatnot. So the real world experiences and the the, the virtual, the, the you know, the uh, the video game experiences. In the end, you know, they're quite similar as they are made to give you an experience and they're made to give you an emotional feeling and it's something that you take back from it, right? Does that make sense? Then that leaves us with one huge question. If the ending of Minecraft is saying that this world is just another dream, then what is reality? What are these glimpses of reality we see in the long dream of life? What are we waking up to? Every day I wake up, I wake up to the reality that I will be stuck in a basement for the rest of my life. Well, when you first read the poem, it's not even clear whether we can answer that question, because there seems to be some critical information missing. And I don't mean these two figures are being weird and cryptic, I mean there is literally information missing. It's perhaps the most bizarre part of this already crazy convoluted ending. The intentionally omitted words within the dialogue. Quote, Sometimes I wish to tell them this world you take for truth is merely and I wish to tell them that they are in the they see so little of reality in their long dream. End quote. Oh, uh, what? They also they're in the Matrix. So talk about the universe's original interface, which still works after a million years. Quote, It worked, with a million others to sculpt a true world in a fold of the and created a for in the it's like the lamest game of Mad Libs ever. Quote, To sculpt a true world in the fold of the penis and created a penis for penis in the penis. Great.
You can tell this, this was made at a different time when YouTube wasn't so strict. We're told that the reason these pieces are scrambled is that they're beyond our comprehension. We haven't achieved the highest level in the long game of life yet. Ugh, I knew I should have leveled up my metaphysics skill tree. But save those experience points to level up basket weaving or something, because let me tell you, the words that fill in those blanks don't actually matter. Well, they do, but for purposes of the theory, they don't. You see, the scrambled pieces are meant to be the answers to all those questions about life people have been asking themselves since the dawn of forever. What are we? Who made us? What's our reason for living? And there are tons of different religions and belief systems that have tried to explain it. As humans, we have so many origin stories, and the Minecraft poem leaves those pieces scrambled because ultimately- for the, uh, the user to fill in? Elliot doesn't care which one of those you believe in. In an awesome way, it's just like the game. Minecraft doesn't limit you to any playstyle. That's why some people create scale models of the Parthenon, and others just create giant mountains of boobs. When it comes to the ending of- What? <laughs> I can tell you, I've never done that in Minecraft. Of the game, it's the same- A wang or two, maybe, but not boobs. Thing. Whatever you believe in works, so is that it? A choose your own adventure religious experience at the end of the game? Are these just two godlike figures casually conversing about the universe? Not at all. They try to tell us what they are, but like everything else in the ending, it's really complicated because they basically seem to be everything. Quote, the spirit of the mountain, ancestral spirits, animal spirits, jinn, ghosts, the green man, gods, demons, angels, poltergeists, oh, no, no. aliens, extraterrestrials, leptons, quarks. The words change, we do not change. We are everything you think isn't you, end quote. What? That doesn't make any sense. Or does it make sense? And I'm just too dumb to comprehend it. So what are they? In writing this episode, I looked for what the things on the list had in common. At first, it seemed like they were all just magical beings. Ghosts, angels, and spirits. Or maybe stuff that people imagine, but aren't really real. But then they mention quarks and leptons. Real scientific things that aren't mythology. And when you factor those guys in, the explanation doesn't hold. No, what they do all have in common is that they're all things things people believe are driving forces in the universe. Gods, demons, subatomic particles, forces that change things. Whether the explanation is through science or religion, they're the forces that pull the strings. The things we believe craft the universe into what it is. But then the these two Minecraft characters are? And the poem takes it one step further. It says that these two speakers are the things we think aren't us. We believe stuff like angels and ghosts are separate from us, that they're influencing us from the outside, but the poem says that we're wrong. Quote. Let's go further back. This Look how long that is. Billion, billion atoms of the player's body were created long before this game in the heart of a star. So the player too is information from a star. End quote. What the poem is getting at is that everything in the universe is made up of the same stuff. Yo, atoms and whatnot. I know science, Matt. I'm not an idiot like Charm Nexus. This is Minecraft, remember? We're all made up of the same basic blocks, the same set of elements. The resources for crafting don't change. The hydrogen in our bodies is no different from the hydrogen in stars. Or the water in our bodies is no different from the water on another planet. And because we're all made up of the same stuff, the poem also says that we can literally do anything. This ain't no Shia LaBeouf speech. This is way bigger than that. In fact, it's Minecraft big. In Minecraft, you can literally create anything. From a cell phone to your own planet. Everything you create is just extending your imagination. And Wow, no, that's impressive. All these are impressive. All the images he's shown of the building. It's crazy. I've never built any build anything like that in Minecraft before. The same set of basic tools to create something new, something real. At the end of the poem, it tells you that everything you need is already within you. Since the universe is made up of the same basic stuff. So is this whole thing kind of just inspiring the player to, uh, you know, be creative? That's what it sounds stuff, like. You already have everything you need. You're already connected to everything in the universe, and it's already a part of who you are. 
And with that revelation, we finally reach our answer. That's the reality we only see a little bit of. That's the real wake-up call here. The poem has nothing to do with waking up from Minecraft. It has to do with waking up to how important and powerful you are in crafting the world, be it in the short dream of the game or the long dream of life. In the end, the real truth is this. Everything you need is within you. You are never alone. You are stronger than you know. Notch, the creator of my- I guess that is like a, uh, I don't know, I guess a wholesome-ish kind of message. But it's so cryptic, no one freaking got it, so it's kind of wasted, isn't Minecraft it? Minecraft has said that he agrees with the message of this poem. He's made it very clear that he's an atheist, but what we've just shown is that nothing in the poem makes it so you have to ascribe to one belief for another, as long as you recognize, quite frankly, just how awesome you are. Like the poem says, Minecraft won't tell you how to live your life, but it will remind you that you have the power to create whatever you want. And this controversial ending stays true to that theme, reminding the player that whether it's in the game or without, all the power is theirs. And no matter where you're coming from last year, it's a pretty awesome thought. Stress, stress everywhere. <laughs> ...for the beginning of 2016. Anyway, uh, this is very interesting. This is very interesting. It seems like the whole message, the whole end poem is just a message to help inspire the player. But, from reading that, you wouldn't get that, because it's a lot more friggin' uh, complex and difficult to understand. And so, although the message might have been good, it's almost like it's gone to waste, because no- not many people can understand that, except for Matt, apparently. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I think this is a decent theory. I didn't even know there was an end poem. And I did go and I, I was reading some of it. But I ended up giving up because <laughs> I'm too freaking stupid. And I got lost where I was reading. I, just, I rage quit the poem, essentially. But from, you know, as far as I got into the poem, I did kind of see where it was kind of aiming at. So I, I could kind of see how Matt was getting to this conclusion based on what I've read in the poem. But um, yeah, I hope you guys liked this. I think I'd rate this theory out of a 10. I don't know. It, it, it makes sense. Probably I'd rate it then at like an eight and a half for a theory. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys go subscribe to the Game Theorist if you liked it. Uh, hit subscribe to the family. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace!